What's up, Otaku fam? We are the Otaku Couple back. More reactions here for the channel with some more Giga. We have fantasy anime is entering a new era. Hmm. This is already... Yeah, it's already pretty telling. Something. <laughs> Tells me a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you guys for the continued support. Be sure to comment, like, subscribe. Every little bit helps. Check out our Patreon link down below for full uncut reaction TV shows, animes, and movies. Let's hop on in. Get that stuff out of here. Me and the boys are watching some real fantasy. <laughs> this year, it feels like we've seen a full-on resurgence of fantasy anime. Not soy boys getting transported to another world. No more I got reincarnated as toilet paper. Now I wander the world letting elf girls wipe me. Oh, it's depressing. I could actually see that being a thing. Just pure hard <laughs> fantasy, taking the genre back to its roots with two shows leading that charge. Free Run? and Dungeon Meshi, two fantastic fantasy Haven't seen Dungeon Meshi yet. We might react to it at some point, but we have reacted to Free Run. This year. <laughs> but stop. if you're a fully functioning adult and learned how to count properly in kindergarten, you may notice that this is only two shows taking the spotlight. And as we all know, that is illegal in the anime community. I mean, what are we gonna call this? The big two? Yeah, no thanks. I think I'd rather take two steps off the Empire State Building. <laughs> That's taking a bit too far. Because as we all know, everything in the world has to come in threes. Shonen manga, film trilogies, degenerates. But what if I told you there is a fantasy manga that can stand up to these two shows? A fantasy that excels <gasps> in something totally different from the hard-hitting story of Free Ren or the Let insane world-building of Dungeon Meshi. A series that already has an anime confirmed for 2025. Mm -hmm. Which means, yes, ladies and gentlemen, we are on the cusp of a fantasy big Three. That's right, gamers. I'm here to talk about the next big fantasy anime. Demon Slayer. I mean, which hat Atelia? 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 Atelia. I honestly think this is going to be the next big fantasy show to take over the anime community. But before we get into pure fantasy, first, I want to talk about Isekai again, <laughs> because this video is sponsored by Isekai Slow Life, which is in the middle of celebrating its first ever anniversary till <laughs> September 30th. Thank you very much to Isekai Slow Life for sponsoring this video. And now, back to the video. <laughs> when you were a kid, mushroom, I'm man. sure you thought to yourself, I can be whatever I want to be. Do anything I want to do when I'm a grown-up. Unfortunately, if you want to do magic, in the world of Witch Hatatilia, <laughs> that's a privilege only given to witches. And only a few people in the world can ever become witches. Coco wants to be a witch, because as we all know, witches get... Bitches. Well, I don't think that's Coco's primary motivation. The closest she's ever gotten to magic is a book she bought from this mysterious witch on the street corner when she was a kid. And just look, remember kids, don't be like Coco. Don't talk to strangers, say no to drugs. And for God's sakes, don't go accepting magic book from shady looking people in the back alley, okay? Especially if that book smells like pee pee. One day though, her village gets a visit from a real witch. Kifre, who finds himself in a circumstance of having to cast a spell to help out. But before he does, he goes to Coco and tells her, Okay, Coco, I have a very important task for you. Mm -hmm. Whatever mm -hmm, you do, mm -hmm. make sure nobody, I repeat, nobody sees me cast this magic. This is very important. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Coco immediately watches Kifre casting his magic, and what she sees is him drawing some shapes. Shapes that look eerily similar to some of the patterns in the magic book she has. Hmm, she thinks. I wonder what would happen if I tried drawing some of these patterns myself. She destroys her house, commits a class A felony, and turns her mother into stone. Ooh. Good in job. In ministry, we call this an oopsie daisy. With her parent <laughs> acquiring the new status of Mum the Rock Johnson, Kifre <laughs> Mom the Rock. Coco under his wing in hopes that he could find out more about this mysterious witch that sold Coco that book as she begins her journey into the world of witchcraft. And wizardry. Which at Atelier presents itself initially as your typical coming of age story in a fantasy world of magic. So you may be wondering, what does this series do to allow it to stand up to the fantasy juggernauts of Free Ren and Dungeon Meshi? Free Ren gave us a beautiful, introspective tale about the passage of time and appreciating the important things in life while you can that hits harder than most anime ever could. While Dungeon Meshi's world building is some of the most intricate and well thought out I've ever seen, crafting a living, breathing ecosystem that doesn't just feel alive 
alive, but you get a sense that it's also fully functional, like you're stepping into a life-size fantasy terrarium. So what does witch hat bring to the table? Great art? Got that. Interesting characters? Got that. But the real thing that sets it apart is that, in short, it has one of the most interesting magic systems I've ever seen in anime or manga. A hard magic system that not only lays the groundwork for creativity and imagination, but is also engraved in a core part of the world building to present us with the interesting moral conflicts contained within this story. But most importantly, it's just pretty damn cool. Right, so I'm going to spend the next few minutes nerding out about magic systems, but to do so, I'll have to explain to you how the basics of the system works. Lay it so on me. Get out your notepads, everyone, because we're gonna going do that. back to school. Hello, class, and welcome I didn't take to notes in school before. Well, I'm not I'll doing be it now. The basics of how magic works in Witch Hat Atelier. Okay, Any Sensei. Questions? No, Timmy, you may not go to the bathroom. I don't care if you're desperate, just shit yourself like every other self-respecting kid. In the world of Atelier, <laughs> magic is cast by drawing seals, which look like this. Mm -hmm. And these have to be drawn with special conjuring ink. And... That's it. No special enchanting, no custom-made Gamer 3000 RGB magic wand. All you need is some special ink and the basic ability to draw, which means essentially <laughs> anyone can do magic. Except for me if you've seen my ability to do <laughs> Yes, even you can do magic, Timmy, if you stop sniffing the conjuring ink. Kids, do not sniff the conjuring ink, please. A basic seal <laughs> is made of three simple Aww, parts. Man. The sigil, which typically goes in the center and denotes what kind of magic you're going to be manipulating. You want a fire spell? Draw this. Think you're casting water magic? Start with this. You got earth, wind, shadow, wood, Sword, thunder, power, sleep, card, captures of the cloud, expect the unexpected now. Next up, we have keystones that go around the sigil. These are different signs that denote exactly how the element in your sigil will act. And we've got a boatload of different signs that will determine exactly what form your spell is going to take and exactly how it's going to be controlled. Which is why it's very important that you draw exactly how you want your spell to act. One sign a bit longer than the other? Congratulations, you just bukkakeed your neighbor next door with some water magic. Need a big gust of wind to send you flying? How about you try drawing a wind sigil with a massive arrow pointing up and you'll be gliding like guy Genshin Impact. Fuck, of course, that's the first thing that came to mind. By combining your different signs, you should be able to craft a spell to do exactly what you want it to do. Oh, Five Timmy, simple ways to uninstall Genshin. Oh, let me have a look. Timmy, see me after class. And after all that, <laughs> all that's left to do to complete the spell is to draw a complete circle around it. Because as every witch knows, if you like a spell, you should have put a ring on it. I think it was Dumbledore that said that. <laughs> and that, kids, is everything you need to know to become a witch and start casting Yay! your own spell. Do we have any questions? And Timmy's just shit himself. Great. That's the core basics <laughs> of the magic system in Witch Hat Atelier. And I thought it was such a genius system because the core building blocks are simple enough that anyone can understand, but by iterating on these basic concepts, it can get increasingly complex that makes you just think about magic in a totally different way. When you have a grasp of the basics, then you can start doing stuff like linking spells for more powerful effects, nested oh. glyphs where you can enclose multiple spells into a bigger spell to get more complex effects, spell toggling where, for example, you draw two halves of a spell on a shoe, then bring them together to complete the ring so you can quickly toggle the spell's effects on and off. Different oh, ones to help witches draw on specific surfaces. From the approaches they take to the tools they use, everything has been carefully thought out like these tools have been crafted to logically solve a problem if this magic system were to exist. And I have no better way to encompass all this other than saying it's just so fucking cool. This might be a bit of a curveball but in a sense the magic system here was actually a bit reminiscent to me to coding. God, I never thought my coding course in university 13 years ago would finally come in handy. And it's most basic. Coding is just a set of instruction built on a few core concepts that you input into a system that interprets those yes. instructions to do exactly what the code yeah. tells it to do. If the code doesn't act the way you envisioned, well, it's not the computer's fault. It's the human error with the code and then you have to do some debugging. But instead of just searching up your errors on Stack Overflow, I imagine debugging magic seals would be something like, oh hey Timmy, you want me to have a look at your fire spell? It's not doing what you thought it would? Well, you just burned down the entire fucking village, Timmy. Yeah. yeah thanks for that. It's gone. Your mum's dead. Yeah. <laughs> how about you debug your life choices, Timmy? Oh, you want to learn about loops? Well, how about you loop yourself to the nearest orphanage, Timmy? Because that's where you're going. But because... Wait. 
I just realized I unintentionally just repeated the plot of this manga with fire instead of rocks. But because the logic of this system is so defined, it enriches so much of the world and characters. Because instead of just telling us that this person is a genius witch or this person has a specialized skill set, we can actually see it ourselves through how they approach solving problems with their own knowledge of the magic system. Find it hard to accurately draw bigger seals? Well, maybe by combining the effects of a bunch of smaller seals and linking them together, you can replicate the effect of a bigger seal. Don't have a specific spell you need to identify ingredients in a potion? Well, how about you repurpose a destruction spell you saw earlier, but to reverse the seals to conjure up the opposite effect and remake the core ingredients? Like mm. different coders writing a program, there is no singular way to solve a problem. And by setting the rules of the system clearly, it sets the stage to breed creativity in a way that you can appreciate that goes beyond. This person is a powerful witch because he does magic good. I think the first time I truly appreciated this was when I saw some of the first major battles. See, as a witch, you have several approaches you can take, especially in a battle situation. Now, if you're less experienced, maybe you prepare a notepad with some pre-drawn all-purpose spells. It might not be as specialized for every situation you're in, but they're quick and easy to cast by just circling the spells that you need. Maybe you have a specific battle style where you just engrave the actual spells onto your clothing for permanent effects if you're a little bitch baby. Now, if you want to see where the true experience and skill gap comes in, this guy bloody walks in and is accurately able to cast spells quickly on the fly without any pre-made books, assess the situation, then while blocking attacks, draws a counter spell with his fucking feet, flies towards the enemy, then based on the shape of his opponent's seal and the environment, is able to correctly deduce the exact way the opponent's spells work and initiates a counter spell based on its weaknesses. And it was at this point I realized I have not been this engrossed with a fictional power system so intricately crafted since I first encountered Counted Nen. Damn. And I do not say those words lightly. But beyond just being that, a that really cool way order, to show yes. what characters are capable of, it's also from the system that all the major conflicts of this story arises, and we get the interesting moral dilemmas the series presents us with. I think the most interesting concept is the idea that absolutely anyone can theoretically cast magic. Given everything I've just laid out, I'm sure even you can conjure up a spell or two, and there was a point in the world's history where that was the case. However, give everyone unrestricted access to a tool that can help but also cause great harm to the people around them, and uh, I'm yeah. sure everyone's only gonna use it for the betterment of humanity like real life, right guys? Totally. Guys? The world was constantly embroiled in war. Spells that did unspeakable things were conceived. Dark rituals, tragic accidents, human experimentation, and other crimes became a normal part of the world. So one day, the leading governing bodies made a pact to change the world forever. Firstly, the entire population would have their knowledge about magic wiped from their memory, with only a few people, aka <coughs> witches, being given the knowledge of how to cast magic, passing that knowledge down to only a few select individuals. Secondly, certain spells would be outlawed forever, as forbidden magic with no exceptions. Spells that greatly alter the environment and spells that are drawn or directly affects the human body, except for memory wipe spells. This is the black and white justice system that governs the world. You have the normal law-abiding witches that uphold the rules of the world and the shady brimcaps who practice the forbidden magic. Ooh, Ooh. I don't know why I'm doing this. But as you continue <laughs> the story, you start to realize, wait, Who's got more of a point here? Why are the good witches trying to wipe the memories of innocent kids just trying to help out? Is it fair to keep doctors from practicing what is technically forbidden magic on humans when all they really want to do is to heal people and save more lives? Is it morally okay to keep the knowledge of magic to only a privileged few when it's a tool that can empower the lives of so many people? Cause yeah, magic can be dangerous, but hey, maybe the only thing that can stop a bad witch with a wand is a good witch with a wand. Hell yeah, brother. Seeing our characters <laughs> trying to find their place in this morally grey justice system is one of the big driving forces of what makes the world and characters so interesting. The magic of which had Atelier at, at Atelier is just waiting for its anime adaptation to bring it to a whole new audience. I know I haven't talked much about the characters or overall plot progression or the amazing art and paneling or just how fantastic the world building is, but I think this is what's going to make it stand out so much, even with the influx of so many amazing fantasy anime we have to choose from right now. It's a series that takes something as ethereal as magic and gives it a sense of tangibility and yet somehow doesn't take away that sense of wonder and awe. In fact, by allowing me to appreciate the mechanics it makes the magic of the world even more magical. So yeah, if you need another fantasy world to dive into, go check out Witch Hat Atelier. At Atelier? At at Atelier? Atelier? Atelier. Oh my god. It's a French word. <laughs> Not the immediate. Hey guys, hope you enjoyed that video. <laughs> oh, that's funny.
The immediate drop down. <laughs> the score went down <laughs> immediately. It does look interesting. Yeah, I, I want to watch that. It looks really that cool. That means we'll have to check out Dungeon Meshi too. I do want to see Dungeon Meshi. Because we, can, we can't watch only two of the big three of fantasy anime. I'm ready. That'll be an insult to the otaku family. Mm -hmm. I want to read it. The art style is really, really pretty. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Like, really pretty. If y'all have read it, let us know if it's good. Right. Thank <laughs> you guys for the continued support. We will see you for the next video. Bye. Bye.